So, George, our final fight of the evening. K1 once again. Kevin Ward from Elite Southport against local hero Nigel Thomas from the Storm Gym. We've seen numerous times here. Two strong men, but immediately you can see the difference in body language there, in body size. The taller man, Kevin Ward, by a great deal. The stockier, more muscular man, Nigel Thomas. Yeah, this, is, this has been a much-talked-about fight for, for the, UK, the, K, the UK K1 scene. They're both coming off of quite good wins at Infusion. Kev Ward beating, well, he's, he's the world champion. He's, a, he's an ISK world champion. At Infusion, he beat Pete Irvin, which is, he's no slouch on MMA or K1, wherever you want to judge him at. But Nigel Thomas also coming off a win at Infusion. This is a big fight for the UK scene. Yeah, it's nice to be on a promotion like this. And as I said, this one really we can talk about bragging rights here can't we two men on the up yeah and it's, it seems like the uh, elite southport and storm are, are very much quite you know you're not enemies but i know what you're saying they're doing well on the domestic scene so yeah. there's that rivalry isn't there there's yeah, the it's a little that rivalry they've had they've had quite a few quite a few a few tussles tonight but again the uh, Big kick from Ward. The body composition of Ward is just, it's just one that is just so hard to deal with, you know? He leaves his hand out there all the time. He's throwing knees, he's throwing kicks. He's, he's just so hard to deal with. And Well, Thomas is a tough man and he had to eat two knees there. And as you said again, at the height, it's the speed that Ward closes the gap for his attacks. When he goes forward, it's with intent and it's fast. Yeah, which is, which is in some ways quite, no, no, it's quite rare with someone of his body shape to, to go forward in, in, with that character, you know. But again, with that height, the knees are effortlessly coming up to face level when he gets in there, and this is the danger for Nigel Thomas. We've talked before about the Tyson thing, and you saw it there. That's exactly what Thomas needs to slip under and come over with the hook. But the danger for him in this sport that Tyson never had to deal with is the knee is that the could knee, be following. Yeah, exactly that. He wants to slip and rip, get in close and throw some hooks, but, but Ward has already proven that, that he, he will knee him. Well, this is the thing here. This is a great dynamic between the two because Thomas does have to, as you said, he does have to slip, he has to let rip, and he's capable of doing it, but Ward is so fast with his reflexes that you could walk into a knee, and both men have, men have landed cleanly here. Yeah, Thomas was looking for that solar plexus shot. And being being that body body frame, it, it does leave you a little bit susceptible to the body shots. And again, with a tall tree like that, Thomas is doing the right thing by trying to chop it down and get inside and slow his man down. You know, when you talk of tall orders, this one is literal. Ward knows what to do with that height and reach. Good opening round from both men. Yeah, the, the Cobra is in the house. It's not a bad corner to have, to be fair, and I'm pretty sure they've gave Thomas some great advice to, to change this fight up as Kevin Ward is, is, is doing enough to take the first round. And you heard them say you've got to be first, but, you know, they can't afford to, to wait to get Thomas. That's where Thomas needs to be, and this is what he's got to do. But it's easier said than done to score effectively against that taller man. Exactly. As you see, Kevin there throwing the knees. Go, 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 
Ward is saying that was the solar plexus, that was not low. And he's feeling that he had a bit of momentum going there and it's been stopped by that. But the King Cobra very pensive in the corner there looking. You can see his thought process going and I'll lay your bets. He's thinking if that was me in there. Yeah, quite possibly. I mean, that man's almost faultless. Like he's in, in recent recent months and recent fights, he, he's... He's, he's definitely an, announced himself as the number one in the world. So it's a great training partner to have for Thomas. And also taller. Taller. So maybe he, he has been a pivotal part of the camp. Well, Ward is, is heavy and hurtful. The other thing is he may be tall, but you can see he's still hurtful at the weight. And he's, he's asked a lot of questions of Nigel Thomas. And Nigel Thomas, to be fair to him, has had to eat a number of knees. And he's still there and he's still firing. Yeah, he, he's, he's not going to go away easily. Like he, He's a tough dude, as, as I say. Again, short right hand, though, left knee from Ward. Then a left across the midsection with the leg there. As I say, it's a big fight for K1 in the UK. It's going to... Jumping knee from Ward. I said very athletic, great agility from the big man. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very entertaining when, when the fighters try and put a show on for the fans who, who have come to support. Obviously, Storm Jim have got loads in the house. Lots of supporters here. But Kev Ward's got, got his few too. Yes, and I said it's a tough call for Nigel Thomas to get inside this man. A lot of time chasing, a lot of time walking down, and he's got to maximise what he does when he does get inside there because you saw there again from that... Uppercut and roundhouse from Ward. You saw the sweat fly off Nigel Thomas from that left leg of Ward. Yeah, Kevin Ward shook off that, that punch, told Nigel Thomas that it was nothing. Often a sign that it was something, but it's all about the mind games. They say the fighting is 90% mental and only 10% physical. Well, Amir Sabasic there was telling Nigel Thomas for the, the spinning back fist. To, to f you fake the left and then you spin with the right hand there. And it, he's the right size opponent for it, but I feel after two rounds, they're two to the good for Kevin Ward there. As it is, he's just got one last round to try and do something. Mutual respect there. Great, great to see that sort of respect between, between two guys. As you say, it's, it's the final round, three, three round fight. That's where Thomas needed to be, but as I said, that's the danger for him what when he tries to get in there. We said this in the previous two rounds, this is what he needs to worry about as he's on the way in. The, the ref didn't give a count for that, but... And again, another knee. He's throwing the knee. And you can hear them shouting finish, they feel that Nigel Thomas is ready for the finish now. As he's been softened up enough, what a tough customer. Yeah, Kev, Kev Ward is going to work here now. He started it with a knee. Looked for the jumping knee there and almost w w walked into the bolo punch from Nigel Thomas. What an end to a night that would be. A stoppage via a flying knee. Or a stoppage via bolo punch as you're throwing the, the flying, flying knee. <laughs> you, you can't go wrong, really. Good powers of recovery, Thomas. He was hurt there from Kevin Ward. Yeah, he, he's pushing forward, he's controlling the centre this time, which is, which is much better. The, the, the judges will, will see that. But it's unfortunate that he's been hurt in this round already because it's going to be a hard one to uh, turn around. Well, you there know? you've seen the problem for him. Even as he's coming in, the knee comes up effortlessly to face level as Thomas is just coming in to do his work. And as you said, at the weight, Ward's going to be a problem for anybody. Yeah. It, the man is not an ISK world champion for no reason, you know. He's, the, the, he, he's so big for the way he, his, his knees can, can reach anyone's chin. This is what Thomas needs to do. He's sticking to a game plan, full credit. Now that's the right hand that needs to land. It didn't, but it needs to. So it's just seconds left. Kev Ward and Nigel Thomas are going at it for their place in the UK rankings. And Ward 
right hand, left leg. Thomas looking for that one shot that can turn this around. Good shot to the midsection there. I don't think it's going to be enough. Difficult man to get inside, Kevin Ward. And those knees have been telling at range. Yeah, it goes back to what we've been saying. It's all about using the range. You might, you can have the range, but if you don't use it well, then it's, it's quite pointless. Kev Ward, if, if you're a fighter that is quite tall for the weight, Kev Ward is someone that you want to watch. That's right, and you saw there the flying knee didn't land, but it distracted him enough for the right hand to. Oh, and again. A switch punch right there. It's, it's, it's very classy to watch this fight. Oh, oh, that! how did he take that knee? Matt. Nigel Thomas made it look like the knee didn't land. He almost conned the referee there. That was right in front of our commentary position, George. That knee landed flush, and Nigel Thomas just made light of it. Unbelievable. Yeah, we had a great view there, that flying knee. It was an unbelievable way to end that fight, and what a great way to end that night. Well, ladies and gentlemen, for our last fight, quite simply, two of the UK's finest K1 fighters are in this ring. So please, let's hear it for both of these men. But we do have a unanimous decision of judges in favour of the blue corner, Kevin!